Hello everyone, thank you for joining this presentation today. My name is Laura Gonzalez and we are going to talk about an algorithm to annotate transposable elements. But first, what are transposable elements? They are DNA sequences with the ability to change their position within the genome and because of that we also know them as jumping genes. Transposable elements are important because depending on their insertion site, they can affect expression and function of genes near uh, them, and uh, they also play a crucial role in the evolution. Here we have some examples. We have the change of color in the maize kernels, the change of uh, size in tomato, and the change of color in apple. All of them uh, as a result of a transposable element insertion. There are different elements and they are commonly classified into families according to the weaker system. So we have two main classes. The first is known as the retrotransposons or copy and paste, and the second class is the DNA transposons or the cut and paste. Within the families, they can also be classified according to the, their domain organization. Um, for example, here we have Copia and Gypsy and uh, some difference among them. Um, to annotate these elements, there are different approaches that uh, have been developed. So we have homology-based approaches that use uh, databases to discover uh, the elements uh, based on the similarity of the genome and the element. We have the novel approaches that looks for similar repetitive sequences within the genome, structure-based approaches that use the knowledge of a structure of some of the elements, and the comparative uh, genomic approaches that uh, try to identify patterns or of insertion or deletion of elements within the genome. So, the homology-based methods are the most commonly used ones, being repeat masker to reference tool to use. It is also part of a lot of uh, annotation pipelines. Um, however, these tools rely on all versus all comparisons of the genome against each of the elements of the database. And um, these comparisons are mainly based on BLAST or BLAST-like applications. The problem with these tools is that they require huge computational capacities and time to uh, annotate complex genomes. So we ask ourselves if we can use Minimizer that is um, developing a strategy uh, for different genomic approaches and uh, instead of last all versus all comparisons. So uh, First of all, we need to understand what's a minimizer. So a minimizer is a k-mer that can represent a sequence based on a function that is known as the hashing function. That is defined within the algorithm. So as you see here in this example, we have the sequence S, and we first break it into a smaller windows, W. For each window, we pick all the k-mers, and uh, for each k-mer, we apply this function that we define, and then we select the k-mers that uh, got the lowest values of this function. So after that, we can just represent S as this set of minimizers um, instead of the entire sequence. So in our algorithm, the first step is that we have the genome, so we break it into windows as I probably explained. For each window we got all the k-mers and we applied uh, a hashing function into them and uh, we pick the minimizer for each of the windows of the genome that uh, we have as an input. And with that we build the index min of the minimizers where we can store that if value of the hashing of the minimizer and its position within the genome. So with that we can easily identify where is each minimizer uh, located in the genome. Uh, in parallel we have the transposons database or the curated library that we have also as input and uh, here we break it into k-mers and for each Kmer, we apply the same hashing function that we applied in the genome. The idea here is not to find minimizers, it's just to know 
with uh, that hashing function where is its location in the in the database so after this indexing step we are going to have a query and the index that are going to be related in terms of the hashing values of that function that that we had so then we need to find the matches of our library against the uh, genome that we need to annotate so in this case here we have one chromosome as example and one element and we have uh, these matching minimizers against the, against the two of them and uh, so we are going to define a match or an annotation using the first and the last minimizers that uh, are part of the of the larger match of each of our elements and the and the genome so here we have the reported as the first and last positions uh, within the, the genome that we are annotating and we are also going to assign the same family of uh, transposable elements that we got in the library. So we use this um, algorithm to annotate uh, LTR retro elements and we compare them against the results of repeat masker because we don't have a gold standard. So here we are assuming repeat masker uh, is the like the gold standard. So uh, using that, we uh, identify LTR retro elements using a de novo software that is called Impactor2 for each of the plants that we were analyzing that are Arabidopsis, coffee, and rice. And uh, as you can see here, we got a higher than 75 of precision and sensitivity. Uh, using those libraries and we got a reduction in at least one order of magnitude of our software in comparison to the time that repeat masker requires to annotate the same data set. We also perform the full transposable element annotation we using different databases as the Arabidopsis, Coffee uh, databases, the rep base and the trip database and uh, here we can see that if we choose a representative database, uh, we can annotate our genomes with good precision and sensitivity. We can uh, play a little bit with the precision and sensitivity uh, results if we increase the number of iterations of the annotation using the output annotation as the input of the next round. Um, and uh, in all cases, we also got a reduction from 3 to 20 times uh, of the time required to annotate the genomes. So finally, we wanted to know what happened with a complex genome, such as the hexaploid with genome. Um, I, uh, this genome is uh, important for us because it got an 85% of transposable elements. So... Uh, it traditionally requires a month to annotate all the genomes, uh, representing a bottleneck in the process of uh, annotation and uh, next uh, analysis. So here, with our software, we can annotate the uh, with genome in less than two hours per chromosome using less than 250 gigabytes, gigabytes of RAM per uh, chromosome, and we got the same uh, percentages of uh, elements within the genome that are LTR copia, LTR gypsy, and DNA cacta that were uh, previously reported. So, in conclusion, our algorithm outperforms traditional homology-based annotation tools in speed by a factor of 3 to more than 20 times. Um, we expect that these new developments will be very useful for several organisms in studies that are assembling and annotating uh, genomes. And we also expect to make further improvements uh, in the software to increase precision and sensitivity while identifying overlapping elements. Uh, so finally, I want to thank you for joining me today. You can read the complete article using this QR or download and try yourself the software in this another QR. Thank you.